Hello all, welcome to this video on matrix decompositions. Today I'll be talking about eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Now we'll get to know a new way to characterize a matrix and its associated linear mapping. Recall that every linear mapping has a unique transformation matrix given an ordered basis. We can interpret the linear mapping and their associated transformation matrices by performing an eigen analysis. As we'll see, the eigenvalues of a linear mapping will tell us how a special set of vectors, that is the eigenvectors, is transformed by the linear mapping. Let A be a matrix belonging to the n cross n dimension space, which is a square matrix, then lambda, which is a real number, is called the eigenvalue of A, and x, which is a vector belonging to the n dimension space other than 0, is the corresponding eigenvector of A if Ax equal to lambda x. We call this equation the eigenvalue equation. Equivalently, a minus lambda i n into x is equal to 0 can be solved non-trivially, the case where x is not equal to 0. Also, rank of a minus lambda i n is less than n and determinant of a minus lambda i n is equal to 0. Two vectors that point in the same direction are called co-directed, whereas two vectors are collinear if they point in the same or the opposite direction. If x is an eigenvector of a associated with an eigenvalue lambda, then for any c which is a real number other than 0, it holds that cx is an eigenvector of a with the same eigenvalue since substituting cx instead of x in the previous equation, a into c into x is given by c into a into x, where lambda is sub substituted instead of a, which can be written as c into lambda into x, which is given by lambda into c into x. Thus, all vectors that are collinear to x are also eigenvectors of a. Now, lambda, which is a real number, is an eigenvalue of a if and only if lambda is a root of the characteristic polynomial p a of lambda of a. The algebraic multiplicity of lambda i is the number of times the root appears in the characteristic polynomial. The set of all eigenvectors of A associated with an eigenvalue lambda spans a subspace of R raised to n, which is called the eigen space of A with respect to lambda and is denoted by E lambda. The set of all eigenvalues of A is called the eigen spectrum or just spectrum of A. If lambda is an eigenvalue of A, then the corresponding eigen space, E lambda is the solution space of the homogeneous system of linear equations a minus lambda i into x is equal to 0. Geometrically, the eigenvector corresponding to a non-zero eigenvalue points in a direction that is stretched by the linear mapping. The eigenvalue is the factor by which it is stretched. If the eigenvalue is negative, then the direction of the stretching is flipped. Now we look into the case of an identity matrix. The identity matrix i belonging to the n cross n dimension space has a characteristic polynomial p i of lambda which is written as determinant of i minus lambda i which is given by 1 minus lambda i the whole raised to n is equal to 0 which has only one eigenvalue lambda equal to 1 that occurs n times. Moreover, i x can be written as lambda x where lambda is 1 so it can be written as 1 into x holds for all vectors x belonging to the n-dimension space other than 0. Because of this, the sole Eigen space E1 of the identity matrix spans n dimensions and all n standard basis vectors of R raised to n are Eigen vectors of i. Now we'll look into some useful properties of Eigen values and Eigen vectors. The matrix A and its transpose possess the same eigenvalues but not necessarily the same eigenvectors. The eigen space E lambda is the null space of A minus lambda i since Ax equal to lambda x which can be written as Ax minus lambda x is equal to 0 which can be written as A minus lambda i the whole into x is equal to 0 where x belongs to the kernel space of A minus lambda i. Similar matrices possess the same eigenvalues. Symmetric Positive definite matrices always have positive real eigenvalues. Now we look into a problem where we find out the eigenvalue and eigenvector of the matrix A, which is 2 by 2 matrix. First, we will find the characteristic polynomial which is done by taking the determinant of A minus lambda i, 
substituting the values we get this expression when we factorize it further we'll find that the roots of this polynomial are 2 and 5 now since these are the eigenvalues we need to find the corresponding eigenvectors for this we'll take each of these and substitute it in the expression here so in the first case I am taking lambda is equal to 5 and I substitute the values in that particular form then I get the equation as x1 is equal to 2x2 since in the definition we already said that we are not looking into the zero vector I'll substitute 1 in x1 and x2 and see what are the corresponding values I get thus I'll get the eigenspace e5 as the span of the vector 2 1 Similarly, for lambda equal to 2, I'll get the equation x2 is equal to minus x1. Substituting the value of 1 in each, I'll get the eigenspace e2 as span of the vector 1 minus 1. These two eigenspaces are one-dimensional as they are each spanned by a single vector. However, in other cases, we may have multiple identical eigenvalues and the eigenspace may have more than one dimension. The geometric multiplicity of lambda i is the number of linearly independent eigenvectors associated with lambda i. In other words, it is the dimensionality of the eigenspace spanned by the eigenvectors associated with lambda i. A specific eigenvalue's geometric multiplicity must be at least one because every eigenvalue has at least one associated eigenvector. An eigenvalue's geometric multiplicity cannot exceed its algebraic multiplicity but it may be lower. We will see the example of a matrix A which has two repeated eigenvalues lambda 1, lambda 2, both are 2 and an algebraic multiplicity of 2. The eigenvalue has however only one distinct unit eigenvector which is x1 given by 1, 0. Thus the geometric multiplicity there will be 1. Now we will look into the graphical intuition in two dimensions where we are given five transformation matrices A1 to A5 and their impact on a square grid of points that is centered at the origin. The first matrix A1 transforms it in such a way that the direction of the two eigenvectors correspond to the canonical basis vectors in R square, that is to the two cardinal axes. The vertical axis is extended by a factor of 2, therefore the eigenvalue lambda 1 is 2, and the horizontal axis is compressed by a factor of half, so the eigenvalue lambda 2 is half. The mapping is area preserving, thus the determinant of A1 is given by 2 into 1 by 2, which is 1. Next, the matrix A2 corresponds to a shearing mapping, that is, it shears the position along the horizontal axis to the right. If there are points that are lying on the positive half of the vertical axis and to the left vice versa. This mapping is area preserving so the determinant is given by 1. The eigenvalues lambda 1 and lambda 2 which is both 1 is repeated and the eigenvectors are collinear. This indicates that the mapping acts only in one direction that is the horizontal direction. The third matrix A3 rotates the points by pi by 6 radian that is 30 degrees counterclockwise and has only complex eigenvalues reflecting that the mapping is a rotation. A rotation has to be volume preserving and so the determinant is 1. The fourth matrix A4 represents the mapping in the standard basis that collapse a two-dimensional domain into one dimension. Since one eigenvalue is 0, the space in the direction of the blue eigenvector which corresponds to lambda 1 is equal to 0 collapses while the orthogonal red eigenvector stretches space by a factor of lambda 2 equal to 2 therefore the area of the image is 0. The fifth matrix is a shear and stretch mapping that shrinks the space by 75% since the determinant is given by 1.5 into 0.5 which is 3 by 4. It stretches the space along the eigenvector of lambda 2 by a factor of 1.5 and compress it along the orthogonal eigenvector by a factor of 0.5. Eigen spectrum is used in biological neural networks. Methods to analyze and learn from network data are an essential component of machine learning methods. 
The key to understanding networks is the connectivity between a network node, especially if the two nodes are connected to each other or not. In data science applications, it is often useful to study the metrics that captures this connectivity data. The eigenvectors x1, etc., xn of a matrix A with n distinct eigenvalues lambda1, etc., lambda n are linearly independent. The theorem states that eigenvectors of a matrix with n distinct eigenvalues form the basis of r raised to n. A square matrix A is defective if it possesses fewer than n linearly independent eigenvectors. A defective matrix cannot have n distinct eigenvalues as distinct eigenvalues will have linearly independent eigenvectors. Given a matrix A, we can always obtain a symmetric positive semi-definite matrix S which belongs to n cross n dimension space by defining S is equal to A transpose A. If the rank of A is n, then S is equal to A transpose A is symmetric, positive, definite. Now we look into the spectral theorem. If A is symmetric, there exists an orthonormal basis of the corresponding vector space V consisting of eigenvectors of A and each eigenvalue is real. A direct implication of the spectral theorem is that the eigen decomposition of a symmetric matrix A exists with real eigenvalues and that we can find an orthonormal basis of eigenvectors so that A can be written as PDP transpose where D is the diagonal and columns of P contain the eigenvectors. Now we'll solve the problem where we find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a 3 by 3 matrix. So we'll start with finding the characteristic polynomial by taking determinant of A minus lambda I equal to 0. On substituting the corresponding values, we get a third degree polynomial here. I'll use the synthetic division method to check whether a particular number is a root of this polynomial or not, which is 7. For this, I'll write the coefficients of all the terms like this and write the number which is to be checked in the left hand side. I'll start the process by copying the first element as such to here. Then I multiply 7 and minus 1 which is minus 7. I write it here and add these two. So I'll get 2. Again I multiply 7 and 2. I'll get 14. I write it here and add these two. I'll get the result minus 1. Again I multiply 7 by minus 1 which is minus 7. I substitute it here and add. I'll get 0. 0 means that 7 is a root of this polynomial. The rest of the coefficients turn out to be a quadratic equation which is written as minus lambda square plus 2 lambda minus 1 is equal to 0 whose roots are lambda minus 1 into lambda minus 1. Therefore, the characteristic polynomial will be minus of lambda minus 1 the whole square into lambda minus 7. Now, I'll find the eigenvectors. I'll take each eigenvalues and substitute it in this format. For lambda equal to 1, I got the equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 is equal to 0. I'll take x2 and x3 and try it with different combinations of 1, 0 and 0, 1. For both cases, I'll get x1 as minus 1. So the first vector x1 is minus 1, 1, 0. And the second vector x2 is minus 1, 0, 1. Next, for the case where lambda is 7, I'll substitute it again in that determinant format and I'll get the following equations. I'll take the equations of the first two rows and simplify it to get the equation x1 is equal to x2. I'm inserting the value as 1 for both where I'll get the value of x3 as 1. So the third vector will be 1, 1, 1. We see that x3 is orthogonal to both x1 and x2. However, since x1 transpose x2 is equal to 1 which is not 0, they are not orthogonal. The spectral theorem states that there exists an orthogonal basis but the one we have here is not orthogonal. Hence, we can construct 1. To construct such a basis, we exploit the fact that x1, x2 are eigenvectors associated with the same eigenvalue lambda. Therefore, for any alpha, beta element of real numbers, it holds that a into alpha x1 plus beta x2 is given by a x1 alpha plus b a x2 is equal to lambda into alpha x1 plus beta x2.
that is any linear combination of x1 and x2 is also an eigenvector of a associated with lambda. The Gram-Schmidt algorithm is a method for iteratively constructing an orthogonal or orthonormal basis from a set of basis vectors using such linear combinations. Therefore, even if x1 and x2 are not orthogonal, we can apply the Gram-Schmidt algorithm and find eigenvectors associated with lambda 1 equal to 1 that are orthogonal to each other and to x3. We'll use the equations for u1 and u2 where u1 is given by x1 which is minus 1, 1, 0 and u2 is given by x2 minus u1, u1 transpose by norm of u1 square into x2. Substituting the values, I'll get u2 as this. Now we have x1 dash and x2 dash which are orthogonal to each other, orthogonal to x3 and eigenvectors of A associated with lambda equal to 1. The determinant of a matrix A is the product of its eigenvalues that is given by pi i is equal to 1 to n lambda i where lambda i are possibly repeated eigenvalues of A. The trace of a matrix A is the sum of its eigenvalues that is given by sigma i is equal to 1 to n lambda i a lambda i is the possibly repeated eigenvalues of A. Now let us look into the geometric intuition of these two theorems. Consider a matrix A that possesses two linearly independent eigenvectors x1 and x2. For this, we assume x1 and x2 are an orthonormal basis of R square so that they are orthogonal and the area of the square they span is 1. We know that the determinant computes the change of area of unit square under the transformation A. In this example, we compute the change of area explicitly. Mapping the eigenvectors using A gives us the vector V1 is given by AX1 which is lambda1 x1 and V2 is AX2 which is given by lambda2 x2. That is the new vectors VI are scale versions of the eigenvectors Xi and the scaling factors are the corresponding eigenvalues lambda i. V1, V2 are still orthogonal and the area of the rectangle they span is the absolute value of lambda 1 into lambda 2. Given that x1, x2 are orthonormal, we can directly compute the circumference of the unit square as 2 into 1 plus 1. Mapping the eigenvectors using A creates a rectangle whose circumference is 2 into absolute value of lambda 1 plus absolute value of lambda 2. Therefore, the sum of the absolute values of the eigenvalues tells us how the circumference of the unit square changes under the transformation matrix A. Google's PageRank algorithm visualizes web pages as eigenvectors. Google uses the eigenvector corresponding to the maximal eigenvalue of a matrix A to determine the rank of a page for search. The idea for the page rank algorithm developed at Stanford University by Larry Page and Sergey Brin in 1996 was that the importance of any web page can be approximated by the importance of pages that link to it. For this, they write down all websites as a huge directed graph that shows which page links to which. Page rank computes the weight or importance, which is greater than or equal to zero, of a website AI by counting the number of pages pointing to AI. Moreover, PageRank takes into account the importance of the websites that link to AI. The navigation behavior of a user is then modeled by a transition matrix A of this graph that tells us with what click or probability somebody will end up on a different website. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.